morning. To all brave people, 8 o'clock, we are here, you see, so I'm going to start the session about this trauma session of the shoulder by a lecture about minimal invasive surgery of this fracture of the fork of proximal humerus. I am from Israel, from the northern part, which is called Naharia. Now we know that the optional treatment of this fracture is still a union and shoulder stiffness. However, if we go to open reduction and terror fixation by virus technique, mainly rigid plate fixation. This can cause a vascular necrosis, as one can see here, development of a vascular necrosis, stiffness of the shoulder in conservative treatment. So what to do? In order to decide our mode of treatment, we have to remember that there is a very complicated vascular supply to the head of the humerus. You can see the arcuate of the blood vessels. This was described by Hofmeier from effort in 2001 and damage to these minimal blood vessels can be caused either by the fracture itself or by our method of treatment when we do surgery in order to expose the fracture. And here we can see a better picture about the supply of the blood. So who caused the vascular necrosis? What caused it? Is this the trauma itself? Is this our surgery motive? Nobody knows what are the best uh, answer for this, but we know that disruption of blood vessels usually accompanied grade 3 and grade 4 part fractures of the shoulder. So in the last 15-20 years there is a new branch of surgery to these fractures which are called the minimal osteosynthesis. It started about the 80 and you see still we have paper, this is in recent year of 2007, many papers about. Now minimal osteosynthesis it can be achieved either by closed method at percutaneous fixation or it can cause by open technique where we use minimal means of fixation like combination of Kirchner wire, Tension wire band or maybe screws, etc. So for example, fracture of the proximal humerus in a child, you can see we can do closed reduction and fixation by percutaneous to Kirchner wire. This is the first case of 12 year old and this is 13 year old. So I want to present this experience. We had a large series during the last few years. It's a follow-up about five years, as you can see, about 2,019 patients. And the classification, the most useful one that we use is the, described as near by the four part fractures. However, there are hospitals or places where you use the AO classification and other method. Now it's very recommended during the last year to use the CT because CT can give you a better visualization. For example, this fracture, you see it's two parts only, and this was treated very nicely with excellent result. Conservative, but for this part fracture, you can see it's com comminuted. Thank you. Four parts, and this was fixed by minimal invasive technique. You see the most of the fracture that we see are due to fall or all traffic accident or sport injuries, and most of it, the, the one that I'm going to talk today are three and four part fractures. Now the method that we can use, minimal invasive surgery, remember again, we don't speak about minimal means, minimal exposure, minimal damage to the blood vessels, can be by closed or open method, using Kirchner wires, screws, circlas, proximal humeral nail, or even LCP with minimal damage to the bone, or we can go to open reduction internal fixation with minimal or rigid fixation. So in this series, most of the fractures were treated, as you can see, by minimal fixation. We had about uh, five, six patients treated by plates, as one can see. All of these patients with comminuted fracture treated by amyotoplasty is a subject of another lecture, which are not going to be dealt today, but only on Saturday. So if you want to use the percutaneous fracture, you can use it either from distal site to proximal towards the humeral head, or we can use it from the top to go down, or sometimes you can do combined method of from top down and distal up. How to do it? Patient is in the theater, anesthetized, we do manipulation, traction, you can see of this tripa type fracture, you can see beautiful reduction just only by manipulation. This is the CT of this fracture. And then we start to introduce from up one, two, or three Kirchner wires, and then we can do the combination with wires that comes down, as one can see here, this continuation. And then of the story, you see two, three, four, five 
Kirchner wires which are introduced into the shoulder with beautiful position and this is for five, six, four or five weeks, something more, sometimes even six weeks. Sometimes you can't do close reduction by traction manipulation, so we have to use the joystick method. You can see here the head is completely displaced from its place. So we try to do it by gentle traction from one side. One of the doctors, you see, is holding the hand near the elbow side. You cover him with sterile cover. And then under the imaging intensifier, we can do the reduction. We put inside the head one or two Kirchner's or sometimes time and pin. And with gentle manipulation, you are able to bring the head into the place. And then you put the other K-wire to hold it in place. As one can see here, these are stages. You see, this is the joystick. We put it in place, and then we introduce all the Kirchner inside, and this brings you a beautiful alignment of the fracture without opening and without any damage from our exposure. And this is another case, as one can see, three, four part fracture of the humerus treated CT 3D reconstruction, treated again with the joystick procedure. You can see we bring the head into its place by this joystick and then we start introducing our Kirchner from above and we continue, you see, second and three. And, then, and here and there are some more pictures just to describe it. You can see the comminuted head, three-part fracture, beautifully reduced to its place. Another lady, you see complete displacement and rotation that you could bring it back to place with nice reduction. However, in some patients you can't do it. You have to open the fracture and then you go to minimal osteosynthesis. Again, you want to do minimal damage to the vascular head, to the vascular supply of the head, and you can see that we can introduce some screws or combination with tension wire band, as one can see. Only in small amount of patients, as I said before, 17, we had a rigid fixation with the long plates that we had to use it or with other. Sometimes <coughs> we can see the displacement of the head and fracture of a few parts, and you can reduce it very nicely with open means and introduction of Kirchner wire with one or two metal wires, as one can see here. But in other cases where you are not able to do it, you have to go to do rigid fixation with plate and to put bone graft inside. So as you can see in this series that most of the patients were three and four part fracture, treated by minimal fixation, rigid fixation, only small amount of this patient. And I'll show you a few more cases like this picture. You see displacement of the greater tuberosity in CT. You see the fracture here and displacement that was reduced by closed method. Percutaneros, you see, this is a dentist. is now working very happy with his results. And this is another case where to do open reduction. We couldn't put the, play the head in place. So you had to do the open reduction, then to do fixation by K-wire with very good results that we will see later. And this is another patient. You can do the same procedure of reduction by closed mean, but you can do also fixation with rush pins. Now, you start with immediate rehabilitation. At first, when you have such combination fracture, you have to go to immediate passive physiotherapy. And only after three to four weeks, you start with active shoulder exercises and shoulder girdle strengthening exercises. Now, to those of you who are not familiar with the method, I'll see one patient. You can see this is two parts or three parts even fracture, where you do the, record, the reduction, you put one Kirchner wire under the image intensifier. If you are happy, you go on with another one and another, and you can see four of them in different variation, AP and axial views, with perfect reduction. And this is after another four weeks where you remove it. You start with passive physiotherapy. This is CPM, CPM of the shoulder, as one can see, doing movements passively in all direction. And this is treatment. You see the fracture and beautiful reduction after with very good functional result. Other method that we can use are proximal humor nail, as one can see here, for comminuted fracture. And there are few in the market, like this is the Korean one from England. And this is the Targon one with many screws that you can fix the head. 
And the results, when you want to evaluate, you have to judge your patient according to the pain, according to function and strength. This is patient satisfaction. We want to do objective estimation. What is the range of motion before and after treatment, the strength of the muscle, and the function, and of course the most useful classification is the near method and the X-ray. Now there are a few scales in the literature that you can use. In America, they use the UCLA modified Rockwood's shoulder rating scale. In Europe, they use the constant shoulder score, which are almost the same. I'm not going to go over there uh, all the details, but this gives you, of course, uh, evaluation for all the functions that I said before, and you want to compare. Now, in this patient that I described to you about the 200 cases, you see that all fracture except two united within six to eight weeks. With the closed pinning, you can see that excellent and good results you can achieve up to 85% of the patient. With those that you have to go to do minimal fixation by open method, ORF, you can see slightly almost the same results. So if I can get the same results in open method and closed method, let's go and try to do minimal invasive surgery, try to reduce it to do pinning of the fracture. But if you compare according to the fracture type, you can see that the best results are, of course, with two-part fracture and lesser success with the four-part fracture. Only two-thirds of them are excellent and good result. And here we can see, again, two-part fracture fixed very nicely by the K-wire. Three-part fracture, and you can see excellent results with this lady. She can do almost all movements that she wants. There is only small impairment, minimal impairment, nine months following treatment of the range of motion. Of the, uh, of the shoulder joint. Now, some of them, even treatment by pinning or by minimal open reduction fixation, can develop a vascular necrosis of the humeral head. And again, as I said before, this can be because of two reasons. First, the fracture itself can cause damage to the arcuate valve vessel, or during our method of uh, exposure of this patient. And again, this is another method of minimal invasive, LCP, where we open percutaneous. You can see excellent result after a few months. This is the patient after the fracture of the proximal humerus. Uh, unfortunately, in some ladies, we had fracture of both shoulders. You can see the left shoulder fixed by K-wire. Same lady, excellent reduction. The other fracture again, part three, part fracture with displacement fixed and reduced, reduced and fixed closely by K-wire, and you can see now after six months, very good results from both sides. This is another patient with fracture of both shoulder. You see the displacement, the comminution, which is nicely reduced, and as you can see here, after eight months, you can see beautiful reduction and very good range of motion. And this is another lady with two sides fracture. You can see in one of the side, it's looking quite simple fracture. We couldn't do reduction. So we had to go to open reduction and minimal fixation by screws attached wire band. In the other one, we can do it. You see, these are the Kirchner inside. You see the lady, one side, a huge incision in order to open the shoulder. And here we can see only. So again, the recommendation at present, this is now after three years, you can see slight reduction in movement in the range of motion, but on the whole, beautiful healing of the fracture. Another method is to go to, uh, to do the percutaneous minimal invasion by screws, and one can see here. So you use the method that you are accustomed to, what you have in your arsenal. If you use Kirchner wire, you can add block, like described in Austria by Resch, in order to give it better support. Or you have a button fix, as you can use by the AO. The place of entry of the pinning are, if this is the fracture line, let's say, size x, the, the length of it, you do it 2x from here upward inside the joint. This is the best pe uh, place to get it. Fair and bad results, again, because of vascular necrosis or stiffness, you can have about 15% in the closed pinning or 70% in the open reduction method. Sometimes you do minimal invasive, you can go to pseudoarthrosis, so you have to change this to open reduction internal infection of bone, bone graft. In another play, patient with rigid fixation and plate, you can see fracture of the plate, breaking of the plate. 
So this patient has to be treated later by hemiartrosis. Avascular necrosis is a complication. You can see minimal invasive. However, look what happened. After nine months, beautiful reduction, beautiful healing of the fracture. But if you go on after one half year, another few months, you can see development of results so far of the head. This is one and a half year following. And here you can see two and a half years following the fracture and fixation, where you can have damage to the vascular necrosis. So this can happen also in minimal invasive. So to conclude, the art of today is to try to go to minimal osteosynthesis, minimal invasive, minimal reduction. This is by the K-wire technique. Leg screws, rush pin, LCP, intramedial annealing by closed percutaneous or open method. And this may consider the, the first optional treatment of such fractures, even in young patients with four part fractures. And this is a reliable and safe method with low morbidity rate and it's preferable than rigid fixation. However, don't forget the possibility of complication like avascular necrosis. What happened? I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Gershon. Uh, I think we have s time for the questions. So. Anybody have the question for these lectures?